Hey guys, it's uh, Moses with Negron Tech here, and in my internal quest to make the ultimate berserk theme PC gamer setup, uh, I got the GMMK2 from Glorious, and I'm gonna do a little noobs guide on how I ended up modding this and uh, the final product. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. So I got the GMMK2 from Glorious, and I know Glorious gets a lot of crap and uh, being, you know, uh, <laughs> the gamer keyboard, but one thing they do are relatively almost always in stock and it's a pretty affordable price. Uh, the biggest uh, problem when it comes to Glorious from what I've read is that the stabilizers are trash. I did buy some Duroc stabilizers from Amazon for seven bucks, so I'm gonna use those instead. I'll lube them and switch them out, but uh, I did get the bare bones version because it's gonna be my second keyboard build. My last one was the RK68, which I absolutely love. And I have uh, some drop red samurai keycaps. So I knew like if I just bought the whole version, I was just gonna replace the keycaps anyway. So I might as well get save a little bit of money, get the bare bones. This only came in at a $79.99. And you know, I am primarily a PC tech channel, but I do like keyboards. You know, when you have the opportunity to uh, build something, not entirely from the ground up, but have your own like the own feel to it, like you made this yourself, you customize it yourself, it's like yours and there's nothing else like it. So that's a really nice feeling. I kind of like why keyboards are a little bit of a side hobby to me. So I'm no expert. So the GMMK2, this is the 65%. It has 18 RGB profiles and on the sides it has RGB2. If you see here, it's really, 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 really nice. Um, the software is, I think from what I understand, not too bad too. You can get a uh, control the RGB to the software, or you can control it through, uh, you know, just function keys and stuff like that through the keyboard. This is three and five pin switch compatible, north facing LEDs. I know, north facing, but hey, it is what it is. One thing is that the build quality of the GMMK2 is very, very nice. It's not a cheap plastic. It's a nice aluminum top plate. It has that polymer base. It does have rubber feet, and you know, your base angle is going to be seven degrees. With the feet extended, it's going to be 14. I think uh, just regular, the seven degrees is gonna be fine with me, but if you see closely, I th it, it really is a really well-built quality for a great price. You know, when you talk about those more high-end customizable mechanical keyboards, you're really getting into the price that's up there in the hundreds, even 200s, just for a bare bones kit. When you're, uh, you know, you can just get this for $80, which is excellent. So I am gonna break it down to see what the quality is. I'm pretty sure the foam is gonna be excellent. Um, again, I, I mentioned the stabilizer, stabilizers. I think they're going to be trash. We'll see. They are lube though, at least. But yeah, that's what I want to do with it. So with the stabs removed, just got to unscrew these. Take off the top plate. All you got to do, push down the screw or anything else on this little part here, that little clip. You pressure there on both sides and the stabs come right out. These are pre-lubed um, just because uh, the reputation when it comes to glorious stabilizers are so bad. I'll probably just switch them out anyway. Again, I don't know, but there you go. Uh, there are 11 screws from that top plate. So just remove those top uh, the 11 screws from the top plate. Yeah, so for the little connection there, when you do remove the top plate, just be very, very careful. You do want to unplug that. It is nice how Glorious actually has a, these little band-aids here to keep it in place. That's a, a pretty nice touch. So we do have some foam at the bottom. There's no silicone layering or anything like that. It's just foam with down here. Um, yeah, this is pretty nice. I do have uh, extra uh, EVA foam, but I don't think I'm going to use it. Uh, I'll just, uh, you know, do... Uh, I'll just stick with what Glorious, Glorious has here. This is uh, actually nice and thick. Feels pretty good too. I think it's gonna be just fine. Yeah, so we see the bottom of the PCB here. All I'm really gonna do is just uh, tape mod that. I'm a big fan of the tape mod. Uh, if you do wanna replace the foam, you can. And just remember that with all these keyboards that do come, even ones that are pre-built, you can actually just use the packaging foam if you do wanna add a little bit of layering and save you know, even more money. It's no big deal to use this. Yeah, so at a minimum, if you don't want to mess with it, take the PCB off, then you can just tape mod it from here and be done with it. Uh, I do want to add Band-Aid stabilizers. 
I got some in here. I like that. So I am gonna have to be take this off. So for the glorious one, a lot of them just have the screws exposed. So with the GMK2, I don't know about the Pro or the other glorious uh, products, but they have actually little, uh, you know, little foam, little uh, stickies right here. So you just you do have to take those off. There's gonna be I think four screws. And then from there, you can take the PCB off. Now, again, if you don't want to do all this, you don't have to. I think just, uh, again, I don't have a stock uh, sound comparison. I did buy an uh, older GMK, GMMK2, and there's a short of a, of a sound test of that. But because, you know, I'm going to replace the keycaps and I bought custom switches from Akko, you know, I got the bare bones version. So, yeah, guys, so, yep, that's exactly what it looks like. That's a strip screw in my uh, infinite wisdom. And rushing to uh, get this done, taking the PCB off, I just got a little bit too overzealous and uh, ended up stripping it. So because I can't take the PCB off, so I'm just going to have to, you know, just deal with it. I'm going to have to put the band-aid stabilizers on kind of uh, the best way I can. That's all I can do. Yep, so because I stripped that screw and I can't uh, get the PCB off, I just got to do what I can to get these, uh, the band-aid mod in there. I did mention the GMMK2 uh, stabs are pretty terrible. That's uh, not my opinion, that's just what I read upon doing a little bit of research before buying this. Uh, but when you do get in your hand, even though these are lube, you can tell that these are like really wobbly. I got these Durox at, uh, on Amazon, I think for seven or eight dollars. And even with me not having a lot of experience with keyboards, I can tell you that these are way more stable and then these are gonna be so much better. So. You know, a lot of people, you know, you take things for granted, but once you do get a, a feel for that, th those are so much worse than, uh, you know, these $7 styles from Amazon. So I'm going to lube these off screen, put them in. So they do come uh, separate, again, to lube. Uh, you know, my trick is, uh, if you guys watched any of my other videos, I might have mentioned that I was in the military. So anything with the, you know, shooting weapons, it's always uh, the cheat code when you apply CLP to lube anything. It's just contact points. So any metal to metal, and I apply that same principle to, you know, switches in this. Anything that contact points, I want to lube a little bit. So get that nice smoothness. Yeah, so nobody's going to teach you how to do it this way, but I'm incredibly lazy. And I spent, you know, I think three episodes of house last night lubing switches. So I don't care that much. <laughs> so I'm just going to do this. Move it around a little bit. Use the brush and I'm going to lube it like that. Just get in there on those contact points, anything that goes to. And then that's how I'm going to lube them. Again, it's probably not the right way. Don't take my advice. <laughs> yep. So when putting these stabilizers together, you'll see that there's an uneven uh, length to the uh, insole portion. When you do put in the housing, just remember that the longer portion is going to go where the stab is going in. So I actually had the, that wrong there. So the longer portion goes to where the stab is actually going to be housed initially. Stick it in there. You'll feel it go right through. There's a little hole there. And then again, just like you saw earlier, just lube the inside a little bit, get those contact points. Now with the stabs lubed and uh, replaced with my new Duroc ones, just gonna flip it over and do my uh, tape mod. I like to do two layers. I think it's a little bit more deep sounding. Or maybe it's not, maybe it's just a placebo effect. Who knows actually? Now, when you are doing the tape mod, just be cognizant of the plug-in for uh, the actual connection. Make sure you give some room there or just cut a hole after the fact. Either or works. Yep, so just two layers. You can clean up the rest at the end. Make sure you give yourself that little slit for the actual connection. See, I just did it right there. It's not the best tape job, but, you know, it'll do. Now, I should have done this in the first place, but, you know, you can still do it from this side. Uh, just identify where all those screws were, and then all you gotta do is just flip over the scotch tape, and you're gonna do your little holes right there. It's not too hard. You can actually see that I just go through and through, and I get identify where it is, you know, for those standoffs. It's not too hard. It takes a little bit of time, but no biggie. Now, before putting the top plate on, you'll see that the connection actually has a little slit where you can, uh, a little groove where you can actually uh, put it right there on the bottom, so it's not that hard to uh, secure the plate to the bottom base. Now I got all the screws in, just going to press it down, get it nice and flush on those standoffs. So since I did two layers, um, it is going to take a little bit of force to actually close it. Might have, might have only should have done one layer, but 
get that snap. Hear that really nice audible click. And then guys, that's it. We're pretty much done. Just got to screw in our uh, top plate to the base. Make sure you actually get in the standoff. You'll be able to feel it. And again, don't over screw like I did and ruin it. You know, worst thing you can do here is strip a screw. Now with all the screws in place, uh, we just got to put the staff back in. Time for the switches. Lucky for me, I got a fiance, so I got an extra pair of hands to speed up this process. And always just be careful, make sure none of the pins are actually bent when you're putting them back in. My first build with that RK68, that other video you'll see, I actually broke a whole bunch of the gat around Milky Yellows. Now for my favorite part, the keycaps. Got these drop GM GMK uh, Red Samurais, which is, you know, in my opinion, one of the best keycaps ever made. Hey guys, so yeah, so here's the finished product. Um, I am in love with this keyboard. This has been my daily driver for almost two to three weeks now and I absolutely adore the typing experience is great. And even the gaming experience uh, is uh, excellent too. I also absolutely love how thick and you know heavy this keyboard is. Like it just, it just feels so good to uh, daily drive. And I do have the wooding uh, behind me that I've been using for gaming too, but 80% of the time I'm using this and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The keycap set is wonderful and you know, I, I have to highly recommend this. The ease to mod it and again, I didn't do, go crazy with the mods, just band-aid tape and I replaced the stabs, that's it. And I, and you know, you get an excellent product with the glorious GMK2. Uh, highly recommended guys. Hopefully you enjoyed Moza with Negron Tech. Have a good one.